There was a time when a 3D software called Lightwave 3D dominated the VFX industry. It was so good. No one thought there would be a day when it will be abandoned by VFX artists and studios. But unfortunately, that day actually came. So what exactly happened to it? And what are the reasons that drove it out of the market? However, the interesting thing here, a few months ago, new people acquired Lightwave 3D. And a few months after the acquisition, just last week, they released Lightwave 2023. So who are these guys and why do they think they can bring Lightwave 3D from the dead? And will they succeed? Lightwave 3D has an interesting history that intertwines with the evolution of computer graphics in the entertainment industry. Its development began in the late 1980s at NewTek, a company founded by Tim Jennison, which was considered a visionary in the field of video and visual effects software. The interesting thing is, originally Lightwave was not a standalone product, but a component of the video toaster which was a groundbreaking video editing and production system designed for the Commodore Amiga computer. Marketed as a personal solution to create something similar to TV production quality or something like that. The video toaster was revolutionary for its time, as some of you guys might remember. Offering capabilities such as video switching, chroma keying, character generation, and 3D animation which were previously only available in much more expensive systems. The thing that surprised me is that the 3D portion of Video Toaster eventually evolved into Lightwave 3D. That 3D portion was actually developed by Alan Hastings, with significant contribution from Stuart Ferguson. Their goal was to create a powerful yet affordable 3D animation tool that could be used in television productions. The early version of Lightwave 3D gained attention for their robust modeling, rendering, and animation tools, which were quite advanced for the time. So eventually, the breakthrough of Lightwave 3D came with its use in television production, particularly its significant role in the creation of special effects for the science fiction series Babylon 5, and this was in the early 90s. This was a landmark moment as it was one of the first times a television show relied heavily on computer-generated imagery for doing visual effects, which is a statement to Lightwave's capabilities and reliability and a proof that it was a pioneer in this field. The success of Lightwave 3D in Bible on 5 helped establish it as a serious tool in the 3D graphics and animation industry. Following this success, NewTek decided to separate Lightwave from the Video Toaster Suite, which made it available as a standalone product. And this move allowed Lightwave 3D to reach a broader market, including film and video game productions. Over the years, Lightwave has undergone continuous development, introducing new features and improvements in areas like character animation, particle effects, and photorealistic rendering. Before we continue, do you want to create environments like these? If the answer is yes, then this course by Max Hay is the perfect pick for you. Throughout this training, you will learn how to build each of these environments from scratch, picking up along the way important concepts like composition, modeling, lighting, rendering, and so on. You can also check some of the stuff people created following the course. Another bonus for choosing this course is getting the full fantasy slash sci-fi asset packs, which is fantastic. And to check it out, you can click the link in the description down below. During the 1990s and the early 2000s, Lightwave 3D experienced what many consider is golden era, especially for those artists who lived through it. This led it to becoming a major player in the world of VFX and animation, and this period marked a significant transition in the entertainment industry, with CGI becoming increasingly important in television and film productions. Following the success of Babylon 5, Lightwave became a popular choice for other TV shows, including Star Trek Voyager and Star Trek Deep Space Nine. These shows utilized Lightwave 3D for various effects, 
from starships and alien worlds to complex battle scenes demonstrating what the software can actually do. In the realm of film, Lightwave 3D was used in the production of several high-profile movies, contributing to the visual effects of films like The Titanic and Men in Black. In The Titanic, Lightwave was used to create realistic water effects and detailed shape models, contributing to the film's visual storytelling. In a similar way, in Men in Black, Lightwave helped in creating some of the most memorable alien creatures and special effects. In the late 2000s, as the landscape of 3D graphics and animation continued to evolve, Lightwave found its utility in a variety of creative industries, including movies, television, and to a lesser extent video games. This period was characterized by the broadening of Lightwave's applications beyond VFX in TV and film. In the film industry, Lightwave 3D's contributions, though not as important as it was in the 1990s, it remained significant. The software was used in several movies for specific visual effects tasks. For instance, it played the role in the creation of some elements in Avatar in 2009, which is James Cameron's groundbreaking film known for its revolutionary use of 3D technology and visual effects. In television, Lightwave maintained a presence, particularly in shows that required sophisticated visual effects but had more modest budgets compared to large-scale productions. An example of this was its use in the Battlestar Galactica series between 2004 and 2009, which was praised for its impressive space scenes and CGI elements. I think Lightwave's efficiency and quality output made it a suitable choice for such productions, where achieving high-quality visuals within a budgetary constraint was very important, because back in the day, 3D solutions and 3D software were very expensive, especially for small teams. That's why Lightwave was a good option. The software was also employed in the production of various TV commercials and music videos, where its capabilities in modeling, animation, and rendering were suited for short-term content that demanded high-quality visuals. Lightwave, once a dominant player in the industry, began to lose its foothold, literally. So, despite its early popularity and strength in areas like film and TV production, Lightwave struggled to keep its pace within the rapid advancements and the integration of features offered by its competitors. Now, you might be wondering, what about other 3D software such as Max, Maya, Softimage, and so on? And did they affect Lightwave and did they play a role in its decline? Well, things did not look good for Lightwave, I would say, especially with the rise of competition. And specifically, after the acquisition of Maya by Autodesk in 2005 and Softimage by Autodesk also in 2008, which further consolidated the market and shifted the balance of power. These acquisitions allowed Autodesk to integrate the best features of these platforms, which made it, I think, more dominant in the industry, because it had the big three, Maya, Softimage, and Max. In contrast, Lightwave's development was slower, and it couldn't match the pace of change in the industry, which was evident for its users, I guess. Its user interface, once considered innovative, began to feel outdated, and the software struggled to integrate smoothly into the increasingly complex production pipelines that were becoming standard in the industry. And no one knows this better than the people who were working in the industry at the time. As a result, studios and professionals gravitated towards the more versatile and cutting-edge solutions offered by Max, Maya, and Softimage, leading to a significant shift in the industry's software preferences and making the decline of Lightwave and the competitive landscape of 3D graphics software change significantly. The thing is, the competition between these software was not just about technical capabilities, but also about ecosystems and community support. Autodesk, with its extensive resources, was able to foster a larger community of users and offer extensive training and support and integrate feedback into rapid development cycles. Also, Autodesk integrated software such as Maya into schools, which helped it solidify its place in the industry, 
because most animation and VFX students are learning the software, which later they can use to work in the VFX industry. Over the years, and especially after the competition increased, new tech continued to develop Lightwave 3D, introducing significant upgrades. For instance, in 2009, they announced Lightwave Core, a next-generation 3D software with a modernized user interface and Python scripting integration. However, in 2011, Core was cancelled as a standalone product and the progress it made was integrated into the ongoing Lightwave 3D, starting with Lightwave 10. But subsequent versions also brought in more innovation, like Lightwave 11, released in 2012, which included features like instancing, flocking, fracturing tools, bullet dynamics, and so on. And Lightwave 11.5, which shipped in 2013, introduced a new modular rigging system called Genoma. They also reworked the flocking system and improved the bullet dynamic system. Then, in 2018, NewTek released Lightwave 2018, which included a physically based rendering system and a new volumetric engine, open VDB support, and more. But then in 2019, they introduced integration tools with Unreal Engine, animatable mesh sculpting, and improved UV mapping tools which is amazing, but it did not bring back Lightwave as a mainstream 3D software in CGI industries. One of the major turn of events was in 2019, when Vert acquired new tech and Lightwave 3D along with it. As a consequence, Lightwave experienced a period of relative inactivity. Vizard, a provider of software, for live video production initially took over Lightwave 3D as part of its acquisition of NewTek. However, during this period, Lightwave 3D did not receive significant attention or development, leading to a stagnation of the software and worsened its situation and buried it deeper underground. This lack of development by the new company implies that they were not serious about making Lightwave better, and it was just a tool for them like any other tool not a legacy software and a pioneer in the field that should be respected. But in April 2023, Lightwave 3D was sold to a new group called Lightwave Digital, led by Andrew Bishop, a veteran in the animation and VFX industry with over 30 years of experience. Bishop's team, which includes experienced Lightwave specialists, has expressed a strong commitment to revitalize the software, which is great and actually has a better chance than ever to make Lightwave great again. They have outlined plans to upgrade Lightwave 3D and transform it hopefully into a state-of-the-art 3D package. Me personally, I think this is a very hard thing to do, especially with many amazing 3D packages available these days. Maybe veteran users, especially professionals, are gonna be using it, but current users don't even know it exists. So it's gonna be a very difficult thing to do and a very difficult product to sell, unless they bring in truly innovative features. But the good news is that the new team at Lightwave Digital is keen on implementing significant upgrades and adding new features to Lightwave 3D. Their plans include releasing updates in a phased manner, starting with essential fixes and gradually introducing more significant updates and features. And their goal is to transform Lightwave 3D over the next few years, addressing the needs of its community and keeping pace with modern requirements in 3D modeling, animation, and rendering, which is a must, I would say. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.